And welcome back to Flexible Games, where we are playing Fortress Craft Evolved Frozen Factory Time. All right. Well, I've kind of been looking around. There's my chromium. My molybdenum is way over there. So I'm thinking like this as a central as a central place. So I have laid out here two sections for blast furnaces for each type of ore because a continuing casting basin can be input by four different items, four different blasting furnaces. So I think this setup will work really well for what we're gonna be doing. And to feed this system, yes, I could be using like matter movers or things like that, but I think I'm gonna be using minecarts. And I'm gonna be doing it in a way where uh, the system will be embedded into the ground so it'll look like the minecarts are kind of like cruising along the surface. I think it'll look pretty cool. They just have to pop up right here where, it, where, where they pick up items. So the first thing in order to do this is we're going to need some straight track and we're going to need some gates. So I want an empty gate uh, right here. And remember, uh, an empty gate will allow, will make them turn around unless they are empty. So the red arrow, so they won't, they'll, if they're full, let's say the continuing, all the stuff is full, they'll just sit and bounce in here back and forth until they're empty and then they'll be allowed to leave. Likewise, we're gonna want over here a full gate and we're going to want to face it this way. So the full gate will make them bounce back and forth unless they're full. So they'll just stay in this area until like a, until the, like the cargo lift arrives or something like that happens. Um, now in order for them to, to stay bouncing around, instead of looping this back around, I'm just going to put a buffer right here. And a buffer just makes them It'll, it'll just make them do a U-turn. They'll come through here, hit this, and they'll go right back over. So it's, it's one way to restrict that a little bit. Um, and so now we're going to want from here a slope and maybe a couple straight track. And then I built some turbo rails. So hopefully We'll, be at, we'll get some turbo out of this. Maybe turn that around. I'm not sure uh, which direction they're gonna get turboed, if it's both or what. But now I can finish off the straight track. And that is a nice system right there. So we're gonna want one more buffer right there. So they bounce back from here. And here we're gonna add Let's see, we're gonna need a straight track here, 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 and here. In the corners, like that. And the rest, these are gonna be load stations. I think that's, nope, oh, turn it around here. like so. There's your load stations. Now I need some unload stations. Followed by some hoppers. And you guessed it, we're gonna be able to embed just, this is just a marker. It's not actually gonna go up here, it's actually gonna go down. It's, I'm gonna dig down one and that'll be where they go just to keep all this stuff embedded in the ground so we can just walk around normally. Plus it doesn't interfere with any lasers I might need, like this one here. We'll just be able to pass right through it. So let's set these up here and put a buffer there. And over here we're gonna wanna buffer. Yeah, we see we can't actually go in there because this, that's a, cargo lift. So here we're going to want the full gate. 
and here we're going to want the empty gate. Well, let's face, face this way. Just like that. Set that up. And then maybe a turbo rail like right here. And we were going to want a corner with a slope. Uh, we can go one more with the slope. Like so. All right, so that is the full gate. I just want to make sure I did these right. And that is the empty gate. Okay. So now we're going to want an unload station. I think I needed to face this way. No. This way is fine. So those are unload stations. And now the load stations, I think I have to face this way. Nope, it's, it is this way. And one, two, three. There we go. We now have a system for setting up minecarts. The only thing that's left is where the minecarts are going to get loaded onto the track. And I'm thinking we're probably going to want something over here. I could put it in here. And we have the the depot. I think this will work. Looks like I built way too many straight track. And I can put one over here just to capture all of this. Just like that. And the last part is a hopper here. And over here, so I'm not sure how many hoppers. I have plenty of organic rock. I have 187. I could essentially put 90 carts on each line. Um, I'm not sure how many I'm going to need. However, I also have the ability to build better uh, mine carts. Let me get rid of this. So I could actually build bulk minecarts. Um, these are both fast and large. So they hold 50 and they're super fast. I'm not sure if we're going to want or need that amount of storage or speed since, you know, uh, I'm really not wanting to cause a whole lot of lag down here. Um, but our basic minecarts, I mean, these are pretty expensive. It costs too large, too large is is two minecarts. So each one of these is essentially four minecarts. And four minecarts actually you can we can move a hundred material with four minecarts versus fifty with this one. But the speed difference probably evens it out to you know if these are twice as fast as the basics uh, then you know it'll it would be able to move twice as much. But I'm not too concerned with it at the moment. So let's move these out here. Now keep in mind, these blast furnaces are going to be, as far as power goes, exceptionally power hungry. Um, DJ made these things cost a ton of power. So just be wise to the fact that you're gonna want at least 10,000 power per second moving over here which is why I wanted to line this up with my batteries or my uh, power generation system a little bit so we've got a little bit of material over here that we're gonna want 
don't really want that to sink down too much. So there are there are spaces for our blast furnaces. When when the fine day finally arrives that we're able to build them, we are ready for them. And the continuing casting bases, we're gonna want a bunch of this casting pipe. So if we look down here, this casting pipe here is also gonna cost chromium and molybdenum, but it's also gonna make need this heat conducting pipe, which we started crafting earlier on a couple episodes ago. So we've got a pretty good supply of those, a couple few hundred now um, getting up there. Um, However, it is used quite a bit of the crystal that we have. So there's the crystal deposit. That's all that's left of that crystal deposit right here. And so we're slowly running out. If I emptied all those hoppers of that heat conducting pipe, it would chew through this really fast. Um, we've got this extra one here, which isn't really big, but it's a little bit more convenient because we got the cargo lift right there. The other one is way over here. And I think this one, yeah, this is the one that we're gonna want. So we're gonna want to change it up. Eventually, all this, all this system is gonna have to go over there and come off of here. So I don't know if I should do that between episodes or just dedicate an episode to moving crystal uh, because we're gonna want we're gonna need a lot of crystal a lot of crystal we got tons and tons of uh, do I have any of these I don't we got lots of camel bots down here that's even more organic rock I'm not sure if yeah it is that should help us clear these out Look at that. Now we're up to 200 organic rock. So that was 20 organic rock just with those guys. It's pretty good. And always, uh, if you put the higher tier lasers, it takes them out in one shot. But the more shots you do, the more chances there are of getting more than one organic rock from each drop. So I recommend, you know, keeping with the Mark IIs if you're mining camel bots, uh, if you're farming them. That way you get a higher chance of getting more than one organic rock from each one of them. And I don't really think I'm going to put any uh, minecarts on this system until I have enough material for the blast furnaces and the, and the casting basin. We've got a little ways to go yet. Let me grab some more uh, chromium. Uh, I should go empty my inventory, but let me just grab some here. And remember they stack to 150, so you can just increase, increase the amount that you're holding. By quite a bit, actually. Hop over here. Yeah, you can't pick any up if you can't pick up the full stack. Although I should be able to just... I guess I can't just... I guess shift-clicking and control clicking picks one up at a time so let's go see how much oh oh no I, I did put a 2000 slot hopper up where I'm smelting the chromium and molybdenum because I was getting really tired of doing all the little individual hoppers. So now I should be able to just dump all my ore into one hopper and 
call it good. Which really helps. So here we are. And we're not quite empty yet. Looks like there's 1,100 free. So I got the, the rest of them here just to to fill them in. There's 82 more. So we're getting up there. Probably the rest of this chromium. Hopefully the rest of this chromium. And maybe one more one more round of molybdenum should should keep us going. Whoa. So now let's put all of our, our minecart stuff away so that I can go down and grab even more material every time I go down. So let's come down here. Since I've got more than a hundred of those. Dump all this in here. So now anytime I want to do minecart stuff, I got a bunch of bunch of material ready. They use primary PCBs. Which I made a whole lot of before the, before the episode. Um, I've got a little bit of extra stuff I could uh, macerate all this deep stone. I think it's time I feed. Well, I don't really want to feed the hive. I do want to add some ablators and stuff to the hive before I feed it again because that back wall is getting pretty packed full of resin, and I'd rather I'd rather clear a lot of that away so let's go see how many ablators and stuff I have I know I have some left over um, let's see I have four ablators left I got plenty of liquefiers this is one of the reasons I wanted to keep um, the the organic lenses so let's build like 10 more. Um, what, come on, click. There we go. And now I should be able to build some more ablators. I got 14 of each. Let's check my battery situation. I've got 81 of these, 27, 4, three more MK4s. I've got 26 of those, 21 of those. I should have plenty. Uh, the only thing I might need more of are matter movers. So let's go check my matter mover situation. And kind of double check all this stuff here. Hopper situation. How's my hopper situation? Hoppers are good. Uh, I might need some more huge storage hoppers. Let's build some of those before I go down there. There we go. Yeah, because that back wall of that resin is getting pretty excessive. Yeah, you can see it's pretty solid back here so I'm gonna want I'm gonna want another one I've got that one I raised up a little bit more than what I had and it looks like yes indeed the resin cleared out a bunch of this glass that I had there that's interesting but yeah right in here is where I'm gonna need some more so let's see if I can drop down some power. Oh, I am dropping power down here. So I'm going to want some more power to be dropped down. Just a little bit extra Or someplace else. So next episode we will tackle 
a little bit of this problem here. I'm going to probably want to set up a temporary area to get some of this stuff and then slowly creep my way up. So yeah, I might have to do this off camera and then once I once I have a final setup do it on camera, I'm not sure. I'm a little leery of doing too much off camera. People are wanting to see a lot more. So So yeah, build a build a battery over here, get some get some stuff going. I'm going to want as over as possible. There we go. Now I'll just slowly build up, creep my way up until I'm at about this level up here and then figure out what I'm going to do about the matter moving and stuff. It's going to be a little trickier. But that'll have to do it for this episode. So I thank you for watching and I will see you next time.